good gentles all, please welcome those loquacious lovers of legends and lore. Those versatile viscounts of voluminous verbosity as they portray a panoply of personalities under this preeminent proscenium. Please welcome Mr. Smythe and Mr. Jones. Well, hello, everybody! Can we get a huzzah? Huzzah! Huzzah! I'm Mr. Smythe, and I'm Mr. Jones, and how is each and everybody doing today? Welcome to the theater, the famous royal theater, and while we're in the theater, I say let's do a play! Using our imagination, as well as a good enunciation, together we will be creating a creation that will take your breath away. Is a stage, my friend. Attend and hark if you've an ear to lend. We're at a tune with him once upon a time at the start, and there's a happily ever after at the end. I say, Mr. Spike. Yes, Mr. Jones. What story shall we players play today? Today we shall render upon these poems an adventure most hair raising. <laughs> hair raising. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Spike. For today we will tell the timeless tale of. She puts some work into it, makes her mind up to pursue it. She can make her wish come true. It may be awfully hard to do, but with imagination, some courage and determination. If she can conquer all her fears and trepidation, well, then she just might make it through. For all the world is a stage, my friend. Attend and hark if you can hear to lend. Here's one thing on which you can. Today we have two special guests. Two special guests? Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, well, I ate an apple. <laughs> Wait a second. Goldilocks and her three dancing bears. No, 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 no. no. no dancing bears. Only two? No. Just one? No, there are no dancing bears. Oh. Presenting Goldilocks and no dancing bears. Oh, no, just Maybe they can be the dancing bears. There's a mama and a papa and I'll be the baby. But you said a young lady with golden locks. Yes, Rapunzel. Rapunzel doesn't have any dancing bears. She's the first guest. The first guest? Yes. Who's on second? That is the question. Ah, I can hardly wait. And please give a warm welcome to our first royal visitor, the one, the only, the one and only, Rapunzel! in your presence today. And we are most delighted that you accepted our invitation to join us for a live performance of your story. Oh, it's my pleasure. After all, who better to help tell the story of Rapunzel than Rapunzel? This is going to be such an adventure. Now remember, we are here to assist you any way we can. Should you wish to know where to stand, we shall show you. Should you want to know what to say, we will tell you. Should you wish to recognize one of us for most outstanding performance by a player in a leading role, drama or comedy, we shall kneel before you in humble gratitude. <laughs> I'm sure you'll both be wonderful. Very well then. Are you ready? Yes! Then let the play begin. Once upon a time, there was a radiant young lady named Rapunzel who lived at the top of a tall, tall tower. From the time I was just a baby, my mother never allowed me to go outside. Each day, as Rapunzel gazed out her tower window, she wondered when would her life begin. My dream was to see the floating lanterns that appeared in the night sky every year on my birthday. But today, like every other day, Rapunzel's daydreams were interrupted by the sound of a familiar voice. Rapunzel! Mother Gothel? Let down your hair! Oh, let me undo that. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have no idea how long it takes to braid this. Of course, princess. Stunt hair, please. What is that? That is a theatrical representation of your hair. Oh, I love the theater. Rapunzel, I'm waiting. Coming, mother. Obediently, Rapunzel lowered her hair so that Mother Gothel could easily ascend the steep tower wall. <gasps> Oh, thank you. Oh, 
it should be noted by all in attendance that Mother Gothel was not Rapunzel's real mother. That's right. I was kidnapped by Mother Gothel when I was just a baby. And why was Rapunzel kidnapped? Ah! Mr. Jones! Because of her magic hair! Yes, which keeps Mother Gothel oh, oh. the fairest of them all. <laughs> ah! Rapunzel. Oh. Oh. oh, Rapunzel, Mommy's feeling a bit run down. Huh? Why don't you let me brush your hair while Mr. Smythe sings your magic song? Whenever I sing the magic song, my hair began to shimmer and glow. And when it glowed, it kept Mother Gothel young with its special healing power. As Gotham brushed the enchanted hair, the years melted away. Ah, like sand through the hourglass, thus were the days of our lives. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Now, go get my mirror. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you know what I see? I see a strong, confident, beautiful young lady. Oh, look, you're here too. <laughs> Realizing this might be her last opportunity, Rapunzel summoned up the courage to ask. I was wondering, since it's my birthday tomorrow, would you please take me to see the floating lanterns? It's my only birthday. Oh, absolutely not, Rapunzel. Oh, sorry. Samuel, flower came and glow, let your power shine, make the cloth of your spring back who once was mine. Ta-da! I told you the world is a dangerous place, filled with ruffians and thugs. Ah, that's why I keep you locked in this beautiful dark. Sorry, I didn't mean to sleep, Samuel. Flower glow, power shine, cloth of your spring back. Ta-da! For your own safety, my dear, you will never, ever, 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 ever leave this tower? Ever! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Trust me, Rapunzel. Mother knows best. <laughs> oh. Wall. <laughs> <Wall. laughs> Rapunzel was determined to see the floating lanterns, so she did what any imprisoned 18 year old girl would do. She packed up a frying pan and headed for the window. Looking down, Rapunzel spotted a young man climbing the tower. <laughs> Stranger! And as the young man hauled himself up into a tower room, a hearty huzzah for Flynn Rider! <laughs> Quickly, Rapunzel did what any imprisoned 18 year old girl who had just knocked out a climbing stranger would do. <laughs> After that, she went through his belongings, found a royal crown, and hid it. Surely I can convince him to take me to see the floating lantern. What Rapunzel didn't know was that the crown was stolen. Flynn was a wanted man. Look, Blondie, there is no way that I will ever, 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 ever take you to see the floating lantern. Okay, I'll take you to see the lanterns. Anything to get that crown back. And so Rapunzel let down her hair. <gasps> and down the tower they climbed. Okay, well, this isn't weird. Climbing down here, as they scaled down the stone wall, the stranger introduced himself as... Flynn. Flynn Rider. <laughs> and before Rapunzel could say... Holy hairbrush, Flynn! Their feet were on the ground, and they were off and running on their new adventure! I can't believe I did this! This is so fun! Yay. I just hope we don't run into any ruffians! adventure as quickly as possible and avoid being arrested by the royal guards. Flynn said, Hey, are you hungry? Because I know a great place for lunch. And thus he led the way to the Snuggly Duckling Tavern. Which, as it turns out, was filled with ruffians and thugs. Hello! Welcome to the Snuggly Duckling, the finest ruffian thug cuisine in the land. Bring it in. Smells like that lunch special today is liver and onions with a side of knuckle sandwich. Stay away from the chicken salad, though. I'm pretty sure it's not chicken. Or salad. No, I think it'd be a whole lot safer if we just turned you around and got you back home. What do you say, Blondie? Let's get you back to your tower and get that crown back. Uh, excuse me. Uh, hi. Are you Flynn Rider? Do I look like Flynn Rider? What do you do think? Does he look like Flynn Rider? Give me back my straight! Uh -huh. I need 
him to take me to see the flowing lanterns. It's my dream. Oh. So don't any of you have a dream? I had a dream once. I've got a dream. I've got a dream. See, I ain't as cruel and vicious <laughs> as I see. <laughs> Though I do like breaking femurs, you can count me with the dreamers. Like everybody else, I've got a dream. Hey, I've got a dream. We'll take it away, fellow ruffian. I've got scars and bumps and bruises. Put something here that is. I said, let's not even mention my complexion. But despite my extra toes and my goiter and me nose, I, I, I really want to make a love connection. He's got a dream. He's got a dream. I've got a dream. She's got a dream. And with every passing hour, she's so glad she left her tower. Like all you lovely folks, she's got a dream. Maximus, a horse of the Royal Guard, and he's after me. <laughs> Follow me. There's a secret passenger. <laughs> A towering reservoir on one side, a deep chasm on the other! <laughs> Thinking quickly, Rapunzel tossed her hair across the chasm, where it latched on to a wooden beam. Follow me! But it was too late, for Flynn was trapped and Maximus was on him, sword drawn. Seriously? themselves trapped in a cave, too dark to find their way out, with the water level rising. I never should have left my tower. This is all my fault, Flynn. Eugene. My real name is Eugene Fitzherbert. <laughs> Someone might as well know. I have magic hair that glows when I sing. What? <laughs> I have magic hair that glows when I sing. <gasps> Rapunzel's hair illuminated the water with its magic light and led them out of the cave. Can we get a huzzah? Please make some noise for the backside of water! Right, you're definitely in a boat. We don't have a boat. Oh, but it was so romantic. You can't leave that part out. Uh, ooh, huh? Ooh, now what is that? It's a theatrical representation of our boat. Oh, I love the theater. We. <laughs> the floating lanterns in honor of their lost daughter. They're so beautiful. And as the sky filled with the lanterns warm glow, I realized I was falling in love.
quickly as she could, Rapunzel raced back to the tower. Rapunzel, where are you going? Rapunzel, where have you been? Out there, discovering who I really am. I'm the missing princess. Who? Hussar! What? I have something to say. Ah! <laughs> well, bravo, you figured it out. <laughs> but you and your magic hair are going anywhere. You're staying right here, keeping me the fairest of them all. Thank you. Ah! Oh, it's I right. discovered who you really are. Ah! And Eugene <laughs> told me. <laughs> well, that's the circle of life, my dear. Now, come along. Where no one will find you again. No, we can't let him die. We can't let him in. It's both our secrets. Let me heal him and I'll go away with you forever. Rapunzel never broke a promise. Mother Gothel agreed to allow her this final act of kindness. We can't let you do this. I can't let you die. If you do this, you will die. And so with this last bit of strength, Eugene grabbed Gothel's knife and oh, no! cut Rapunzel's hair. How could you? Come back here. That's my hair. It's mine. My golden hair suddenly lost its magic. Causing Mother Gothel to wither into a shrieking old hag. No! <laughs> <laughs> Ceased with thou hast done, for I melt. Oh, I melt. Oh, it's not a bit of fun. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little chameleon. She had lost true love, and all that remained was a single tear. That tear fell upon his cheek, and it began to glow. You see, the same magic that was in Rapunzel's hair was also present in the single teardrop. Its healing light flowed through Eugene and sprang forth, swirling through the tower room. And with that light came new life. And new love! Can we get a huzzah? Yeah.